mediocre departments, some good, some bad. And it's just, I mean, I disagree with you fundamentally about the overall thing he's saying. I can see your perspective, but if you're honest, I think you can see my perspective. But go ahead. You got 60 seconds. This is the problem, okay? Since the 1970s, okay, Cold Cush Crew, uh, Africa Bambada, there are songs from the 70s, rap songs about cops murdering black people, okay? In the movie The Departed, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Mark Warburg talk about how uh, Irish policemen join the force so they can split a nigga's head open. This is not our imagination. You may have been living under tyranny when it comes to police for the last 10, 15 years. We've been living under it for decades, and we're sick of it. My son, but this past summer, he's 17 years old. We live in a decent middle-class neighborhood. He walks home from the pool with his friends. Eight times he's been approached by the police this summer. Eight different times. No, I hear you. It's harassment, and, and, it's because, and it's because of a lot of different factors, old customs, racism, things like that, but also movements, the gangster hip-hop culture pushed by MTV, the, the whole cop-killing narrative then gets stereotyped and projected onto your son, which is going to get worse. I'm saying the cold-blooded social engineers, sir, are manipulating us all against each other. i tell you what I'm going to do. Rob Dew's coming up. i, I got to check out of here. This is just too depressing, and I, I, I do this every once in a while. I'm checking out of here. We're going to hold you over after this John Bound report, and then Rob Dew will come back in that first five-minute segment, let you finish up. Then we got a guest coming in. Uh, and I'm going to go out. I didn't eat breakfast this morning. I also got low blood sugar. So that's part of what happens here. Uh, so I've, I've got to eat, and uh, i got to take care of this uh, issue. But let's go to uh, John Bounds' report. Samuel Cohen, the inventor of the neutron bomb, once said, the question I ask of myself was something like, if we're going to go on fighting these damned full wars in the future, shelling and bombing cities to smithereens and wrecking the lives of their surviving inhabitants, might there be some kind of nuclear weapon that could avoid all this? Cohen went on to invent a hydrogen bomb without the uranium-238. Real early on, I began to see radiation. Nuclear radiation as an effective means of waging ground warfare in a relatively moral way because the neutron bomb is the most discriminate weapon ever devised. There's a very sharp cutoff between the radius out to which the enemy will be killed and where the friendly troops are positioned. The neutron bomb would essentially increase the radiation output to as high as 80% without the massive destructive blast. The relatively small kill zone would spread into enemy troops, liquefying their living tissue with the emitted massive dose of neutrons. In 1975, the Ford administration, under the guidance of Secretary of Defense James Schlesinger, proceeded to build the neutron bomb. Protests in an arms race soon followed. Anti-nuke President Jimmy Carter dropped the program, but President Ronald Reagan eagerly supported it, saying, Very simply, it is the dreamed-of death ray weapon of science fiction. It kills enemy soldiers, but doesn't blow up the surrounding countryside or destroy villages, towns, and cities. Here is a deterrent weapon available to us at a much lower cost than trying to match the enemy gun for gun, tank for tank, plane for plane. However, support for the neutron bomb had changed by the time Reagan took office, and military leaders were skeptical of its use on the battlefield and the potential it had to affect civilians. Plus, the bomb had only reached a small percentage of its intended neutron radiation output. The bombs were then dismantled by the Bush administration. Or were they? Back in 2012, UK ex-Defense Secretary Lord Gilbert suggested dropping a neutron bomb on the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Up in the mountains of the borders between Afghanistan and Pakistan, there's nobody living there except a few goats. And how many people handling them? If you told them that there were going to be some uh, ERRB warheads dropped there, a very unpleasant place to go, they wouldn't go there. Now, as President Obama desperately gathers support for his one-sided deal with Iran, the Saudis are waging a full-scale campaign of genocide against the people of Yemen. Among the banned U.S.-supplied cluster bombs used by Saudi airstrikes, 
There is now unconfirmed evidence of a neutron bomb in play. Who is supplying these bombs remains to be seen. It could be the U.S., France, Israel, or China, which have all detonated at least one neutron bomb. The bottom line is, Obama's pending deal with Iran will only heat up the arms race in the already volatile Middle East. John Baum for Infowars.com. And we'll be right back after this. It's Rob Dew. Totalitarianism comes in many different flavors throughout history. It can come from the right wing, the left wing. It can come from religious cults. It can come from a foreign invading army. And in the modern 21st century, it's basically coming from political correctness. Masquerading as the Renaissance, masquerading as liberalism, it seeks to shut down free speech. And the controlled globalist left has willing accomplices in the Republican Party and other conservative and libertarian organizations and groups throughout the world. The robber barons that control this planet are not free market. They are monopoly men who seek to have systems free of competition, controlled by offshore combines above the law. The main mission of Infowars.com and my 20 years on air is to shatter the left-right paradigm and to get the public to become aware of what's really governing and controlling society on a mass scale. Bottom line, we have reached that legendary, colossal moment in history where the next thousand years of human development, our very destiny is being decided. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. The first money bomb I've done in three years because we only do these if they're critical to be able to build up our infrastructure. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on UHF, VHF, and cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. Starting September 16th through the 17th, we're going to broadcast live from 11 a.m. on the 16th through 2 p.m. on the 17th for 27 hours with an amazing lineup of guests, investigative journalists, documentary films, and more. We are seeking to raise a million dollars so that we can reach 400 million extra people potentially in the next year. Because if you do the math, and if you look at the numbers that we're already getting from affiliates and from the internet and from YouTube and from Facebook and all the platforms, we are reaching 20 million people a week. If you put all that together over a year, that's upwards of 200 million different individuals around the world is how the algorithm metrics come out. So I simply want to double that in the next 12 months after launching this money bomb. Just the satellites, the closed captioning under federal law and other regulations will cost us right at $39,000 a month, which if you add it together is over $400,000 a year alone. When you talk about cameras, crew, studio, million dollars is only a portion of what we need to do this. But it's an important part to ensure with the collapsing economy and the hard times we're going into that we have the funds it takes to keep this beacon of truth exposing globalism and dehumanization operating so join us this september 16th and 17th for what i believe will be the final money bomb that infowars ever runs as we prepare to launch to the next and final level of global awakening because as mahatma gandhi famously said First, they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they attack you, then you win. We are in that process of being massively attacked. And in the face, we're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb for all the information. And in closing, I want to say this to all of you patriots out there across the globe that have spread the word about our operation and that have supported us. History is happening right now. The destiny of humanity is being decided right now. And InfoWars, which you, the viewers and listeners and activists, stand at the heart of, 
is the engine that has made all this possible. You're not standing behind the info war. You are standing at the center of it. You are right beside us in this fight. And I guarantee you, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and Sam Adams would be incredibly proud of what you've done in defense of human freedom, in defense of true liberty. So from myself, Alex Jones, and the entire InfoWars crew, we salute you. Join us this September 16th and 17th for the 27-hour Money Bomb in defense of human liberty. This is Rob Dew here live for the third and fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm going to be hosting, I think in the uh, fourth hour, we're going to have Leanne McAdoo and Jakari Jackson joining me. Um, if you are listening to this on the radio and you'd like to watch it in video, go to Infowars.com forward slash show and you can watch a video of everything that's going on here. You can see the studio that was helped paid for by PrisonPlanet.tv members and also supporters of the InfoWarsStore.com. We're going to go back to Nathaniel in uh, South Carolina who is, I was listening to this uh, just in my office and uh, very angry. Um, and, and, I, and I think, you know, very justified in why he's angry. I just want to say this before I go back to him. If you start a shooting war with the police, it's not going to end well on either side. And we have to defeat this with the info war, using cameras, putting this stuff out and just inching forward. It's not going to change overnight, I can tell you that. But Nathaniel, go ahead, um, finish with what you were uh, talking about. I can't speak for the, the, the idiot member of Black Lives Matter that had that obscure uh, blog talk radio show that probably 50 people didn't hear until Alex put it on his uh, airwaves and, you know, millions of people hear it, which, you know, I, I got to question what's the motive behind that. But again, we're dealing with an obscure blog talk radio guy that probably didn't have 50 listeners, okay? I'm not defending that. You don't indiscriminately go out and kill anybody. What Minister Farrakhan is talking about is, that 12-year-old boy in Ohio, where the cops roll up and shoot him dead, there's no redress. There's no way to get justice. I absolutely understand taking a weapon and going out and serving justice on that police officer. On anybody who would kill somebody unfairly and indiscriminately without and, and them having no redress. And the family having no redress. Okay? That's what any man would do. So... My problem is Alex Jones constantly attacks the mainstream media, and rightfully so, for developing narratives and then running with them, whether it's climate change, gay rights, or whatever they're doing. Well, the, the right-wing media has developed a narrative also, and they're running with it, which is that Black Lives Matter is the new uh, third right. Uh, you have some idiot members of that organization talking about murdering people indiscriminately? Absolutely. Uh, are they funded by Soros? I don't know. I haven't looked into that. But I can assure you, it's not an organization of, of, of millions of people looking to uh, kill white people indiscriminately, okay? Just like if you go to any Tea Party rally, you can, you know, the left wing will always record the two or three who talk about the Nick Rose and, and the no good Mexicans. And then Alice complains that all of the Tea Party is painted with that broad brush. The same thing here. And I, I didn't even call them to defend Black Lives Matter. I, I personally am not concerned with them. I'm concerned with taking what Minister Farrakhan said and twisting it and then tying it to what that idiot at Black Lives Matter said. They're two completely different things, okay? Completely different. And that's indefensible. He can't complain about his words being taken out of context when it comes to the Boston bombing and being deeply racist. And then he twists the words of somebody else. That's my issue, okay? I understand uh, dealing with the police and and, and and things of that nature. I scared to death for my son. Well, scared to death. I, okay? and Nathaniel, I can tell you this. This what what that that radio talk show that we played that uh, that was not an isolated incident. We have video that we shot ourselves of a uh, open carry march, and it wasn't. I don't think it was the new Black Panthers. It was a different group, but they were shouting the same things while they were armed. Uh, I think it was oink oink bang bang. Um, that's that's what they were saying, and there's there's other talk shows, and those were new Black Panthers that were saying 
you know, you should go out and it's, it's going to be open season on white people. This is not a isolated incident, but I hear what you're saying, too. I mean, this is why we have to come together and have this open discourse. And I, I thank you for calling. We're going to be back with uh, attorney Adam Lowry to talk about 